Hey, it's Tim here. 24.2 is about to come out. Let's find out what's in this release. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so right off the back of conference, 24.2 is about to come out and Tableau have released the coming soon page. The coming soon page is typically when Tableau says, hey, this is what's going to be in this release. Sometimes, sometimes those features don't come out on release day. They get maybe phased later into the month. But with only three releases a year now, 24.2 is a critical update because it's also the only update for Tableau Server. Yes, if you have Tableau Server, you don't get updates with each release. You only get them every other release. So that's super important to bear in mind. This is going to be the server release for this year. So the page is here. I'm just going to scroll down. And what we're going to do in this video is I just like to do a rundown of these features. Tableau tend to have them in a funny order, but what they do do is group similar features together. So we'll try and go through this in the logical order. If you haven't seen already, I've got timestamps here. So you can just jump ahead to the specific features and you can drop something in the comments if you want to know a bit more about one of the other features. I will do a breakdown on each of these features once 24.2 is out. I'm trying to hold tight with my principle of only doing videos of features that were released. I kind of break it with Viz extensions and lots of people got upset with me for making a video about something they couldn't use. So I'm trying to stick with that. We're going to make videos once this is released. Right, let's start with Einstein Copilot. So Einstein Copilot is a capability I've covered on this channel already. It's essentially a capability that works pretty much like other AI assistants where it helps you do a specific activity within Tableau. The advantage here is it's trained and it operates within Tableau itself. So if we click on the first one here, let's go to uh, this one. Oh, my mouse is sensitive today. Um, Einstein Copilot for Tableau data exploration. So you can see this uh, area here on the right hand side if you just follow my cursor. And that's essentially an Einstein tab. Now, what I will say is that for a long time now, actually three years now, this right hand side panel has been the place where Tableau's traditionally put AI, uh, explain data, uh, a data guide. All of these capabilities have lived on this right hand side. Uh, and so it's not actually that new of a thing. There's always been AI and machine learning in Tableau for quite some time. But this is the first time we have a chat-like interface to that capability, and it's kind of the advantage of large language models. We can take some sort of intention and use that to drive Tableau in the way we want. And so if you've been part of this beta process, you maybe already know a bit about Copilot, but it's pretty straightforward. You can essentially use it to help guide you through specific steps in your particular workbook in this case. And you can essentially ask it questions to sort of support you. It will also do things like hint things you can do as well in certain contexts. So I think a super useful feature. I won't I won't dive into too much here because we don't have the product in front of us. But just to call out, this is coming and it's going to be great for data exploration. Just opening up a workbook. Um, if you're doing this inside of Tableau Desktop, it makes total sense. The big question, the big question I'm not clear on is, will this be available in Tableau Public um, Desktop Edition? Essentially the free version of Tableau. I'm not sure. That's not always been clear. And I think the AI features haven't always come across to that uh, public edition. So that's th that's just something to be aware of. But nonetheless, um, good to see that this is coming. We also get it for Tableau Prep. Now, Tableau Prep is actually where I'm excited because Tableau Prep is a really powerful tool that I don't think enough people use. It's underused 100%. And there's so much it can do for people, especially if you've got something like the data management add-on where you can then get prep conductor to automate certain flows for you. You can use it to solve and make workbooks just that much more performant because essentially what you can do is you can pre-compute certain things that are going to be at a row level and then you can take all of that complexity out of Tableau and just leave your workbooks doing the dynamic work. What Einstein Copilot does here is it helps people find new ways of solving problems that they might not have been aware of. For example, in this case, um, I think in this case, they want to extract information from a specific field. So they want to get the uh, book ID. And so in here, Einstein Copilot has essentially come up with a formula. Now, if you're good with formulas, then this isn't going to be a sort of a, a big deal for you. But here's the thing. Tableau has a lot of analysts who are new to the field and they don't have this sort of encyclopedic knowledge of functions. So this is actually a really useful feature because it exposes those functions and also plays an educative role, actually, in helping people understand how the product works. And once you do this a little bit, you'll actually just naturally find you start using the functions without Copilot. So it's very much that, a wingman or wingwoman to help you get through um, your specific use cases. And I think Tableau Prep is going to be super powerful. So uh, again, we'll play with that once it's available. Um, 
Unsigned Copilot for Tableau Catalog. Now this is different. What this is essentially doing is it's uh, creating descriptions based on metadata in your data. So it's essentially going to go and add that really sort of high quality metadata that lots of people don't have time to type in, but actually something like AI can help bridge that gap. Now, I haven't actually used this, so I don't know how good these are going to be, but from the demos we've seen, it's been able to add some pretty interesting descriptions about data sets that people just don't bother with. What I hope this doesn't do is add noise, essentially. You know, these sort of... Um, the, these sort of descriptions can can almost come across with a sense of someone trying too hard to write really detailed descriptions when in actual fact all you really need to know is maybe a couple of sentences about what does this data set do where does it come from and what is it answered and sometimes you don't even need a sentence you could just break that down in the metadata and that's enough so it'll be interesting to see how this sort of plays out see what the uptake is on this they're obviously doing this because not enough people use these descriptions so they've clearly deployed ai um, to sort of solve that problem okay Tableau Pulse Embedded Components. So this is really cool. That Tableau Pulse has been out for a while. Uh, you know, it came out in beta towards the end of last year. This year, we've had an update already with capabilities. What we're getting here is the ability to embed it inside of um, uh, any particular web page. So you can see here what's actually going on. We're in a we're in a web page, Home Product Catalog Analyze. You can see you've got the standard web menu up here, and then you've got these buttons which don't look like pulse metrics. They look like uh, things generated from another sort of, uh, let's say, web uh, portal or something else. They don't look like Tableau Pulse metrics. They don't have the design. But when you click on bike sales, it actually opens that specific pulse metric down here below. So this is really, really handy. Um, it, it was always going to get an embedding component, right? And this is sort of the path to maturity with features with Tableau. You get the initial release, and then over multiple years, you slowly start to get the rest of the, the components. I've built an embedding uh, series that I just have not edited. I'm so sorry. I need to just get on and edit it and then release it because um, I've done part one of that video, but I haven't I haven't released the rest. So, man, editing is hard. I'm telling you, it's like, and maybe it's just me. I need to just lower my pride and put the videos out. But um, it's on its way. It's on its way. And this will obviously be part of that series. So let's carry on. Um, Tableau Pulse dynamic sorting and grouping. So we now have a new sorting capability in Tableau Pulse. You know, these are sort of the growing pains of a, of a young feature, right? That just basic things like sorting just didn't exist on day one. You can now sort by the data source, the metric name recently followed. I'd love to see that sort of get a little bit richer. Um, I'd also like the ability to delete one. Uh, I think that is coming. For, for whatever reason, that is hard and didn't exist out of the, 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 the out of the gate. I, I won't sort of, make a joke about not being able to delete not being sort of a simple feature to do because with every platform when you've got a ship you've got a ship and then sometimes the most seemingly simple things are actually quite complex given how they're implemented so um i don't know enough context about that so we can come back to that Tableau Pulse metrics in catalog. So this is just essentially an extension of the Tableau catalog, now showing Tableau Pulse metric definitions linked to data sources. Tableau catalog is a feature you only get if you have the data management add-on. But if you do have that add-on, you get this wonderful view of data lineage that is available to you pretty much all the time. And so adding Tableau Pulse metrics adds that asset to the list of capable assets like workbooks, sheets, owners, uh, data sources, flows. And it's kind of interesting where it's put it in the hierarchy just after flows, because essentially flows can feed uh, metric definitions. But what is super interesting, I, th I think this is a very subtle clue of where Tableau is going. Metric definitions is in between flows and workbooks, which, which suggests that Tableau has a few more opinions we're yet to see on uh, semantic definitions of metrics being done prior to the workbook. And I think that's super interesting. We saw a bit of that at the Tableau conference, and I think we're going to see more of it here. So a little subtle placement there, but I think it speaks volumes to sort of some other thinking going on that kind of is exposing itself here. So uh, really interesting to look out for that. Viz extensions, custom charts for Tableau. Yes, this is this is sort of long coming. I've been absolutely, uh, you know, uh, looking forward to this. And <laughs> I will say I did a video now nearly nine months ago but I had to do a Sankey chart, this very Sankey chart. And it's had a ton of views. And the biggest, the, the most annoying comment on that thing is when will this be available? And I've never known. We now know 24.2 is when this will be available. But there's a lot more to this than, than sort of meets the eye. Number one, I think this will only come to Tableau Desktop, not Tableau Desktop Public Edition. I think they're building a community version of the Tableau Exchange to enable this to work more generally. 
The other thing I'll say is that, look, we haven't seen this all in their final form because the features haven't launched. We haven't seen sort of the pricing models that are going to start coming up in the shop. So um, jump at this, play with this, learn how to use it. But I think there's a few mechanics that we're yet to see play out properly. And it's it's quite a simple thing. But we also haven't seen like all the charts that Tableau are going to build. Sankey is their first one. They previously did a radio chart as well. I think they're going to build some vanilla ones that are all sandbox and won't sort of need uh, the internet to work. But that's definitely a detail to sort of make sure you, you dig into when, when you explore these. Now, multi-fact analysis. <clears throat> there are a few features in Tableau that come around the fundamentally change the way you think about not just not just uh, you know the the task in hand like data modeling or whatever but fundamentally change what's possible as well as how you do the things you think about on the platform multi fact analysis is absolutely one of those changes multi fact analysis i think is also going to expose the lack of awareness of relationships within tableau because you're not going to be able to achieve this without using relationships and in summary, multi-fact analysis allows you to do something where you can use shared dimensions across multiple logical models inside of Tableau. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, just Google a Tableau relationships and watch a video by me, SQL Bell. Many people have made videos, right? Just watch that video, give it the 30 minutes or 20 minutes it deserves because it does take that long to get into the topic. But once you realize the potential of relationships, you basically will never want to do a join again. I rarely do joins as it is. I only do joins when I want really specific behaviors that can't be achieved with relationships. And relationships can pretty much do most things. So it's basically never really a complex use case that justifies me not using relationships. So definitely check that out. Now, multi-fact analysis, take that sort of one step further. Before with relationships, you couldn't have a dimension shared between two logical models you now can. So in this chart here, you can see that inventory and marketing are sharing a, like a dimension uh, between each other. Now, I don't know what that dimension is. You can see this here. It's sort of not super clear, but that thinking can go even further. So you can have inventory, marketing, sales, and support having shared models across this whole entire data model. And this starts to represent the kind of thing you see in Salesforce. It starts to represent the kind of thing you see in organizations where you've got products that you know you you want to monitor their sales but see how that relates to marketing spend but also see how that relates to inventory but then also see how that relates to support tickets you want to be able to have all those perspectives without joining multiple data sets on each other and just being able to create a single data source that answers those questions and let tableau handle how it handles extracts let tableau handles how it sort of brings all these together let tableau handle the speed and performance and figure out what kind of relationships need to work between the data sets this is going to be an absolute game changer. So I cannot wait for them to do this. And the other really powerful thing, it's a subtle flex. It's sort of not obvious. But if you just look over here, we're doing this across different types of data sources. So this, 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 this to me represents what really happens within business, right? Google Sheets, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft SQL Server, and Oracle. That is literally the standard like enterprise setup. Flat files where they shouldn't be uh, and a mixture of architecture because one team, let's say marketing, has gone down the SQL Server, Azure route, whatever, and another team has been, you know, snapped by Oracle and they've gone down that route, right? And it might just be that those databases are also better for the sort of front-facing production systems that feed into them. So very standard use case, very standard challenge, and something that is now going to be so easy in Tableau. But it's just a fundamental change to how you think about creating a connection. If the first thing you do is you open Tableau and you go in and create a join, you need to start rethinking how you're going to learn Tableau and start thinking about relationships. So I can't stress this enough. I've gone on for too long already. Multifact analysis is going to be a huge, huge thing. I'm going to probably try and do like a 40 minute video about this to really try and walk people through an example. I'm sort of building a good uh, sample data set. Kirk Monroe has done a fantastic session. I can't say this enough at conference. Go ahead and check this out. I'll probably put something on screen now so you can go see it. Um, so be sure to do that. Right. From one fundamental thing to the next, VisQL Data Service API. Now, VisQL Data Service is a capability that allows you to essentially take data from a data source inside of Tableau, and instead of pushing it to a visualization, you can push it to a third-party system. So think of it as an API way, a bit like D3, where you can take some sort of data from somewhere and plug it into your own visualization front end. In fact, when we looked at this capability, where is where is the Tableau Pulse embedding thing? Uh, where, is, where did it go? Here we go. 
This Tableau Pulse Embedded metric, I have a funny suspicion that those numbers here at the top are using VizQL data service to actually pull those metrics through from Tableau Pulse itself. That's my hunch, that those two metrics at the top are using VizQL data service to get those numbers from a data source. When you click on that, it fires up the Pulse Embedded component so you can get the rest of, of, of that um, capability. So. Um, really, really important capability. Now, they've done a lot of talks at conferences, but I think this is quite an abstract thing to understand and understand how it works. But I think the, the API is super important because the API is going to make that a little bit more programmatic and it's going to allow developers to really scale up the potential there. So um, be sure to check that out. Okay, custom schedules for prep conductor. Now, this is an interesting one. Um, I think it just means you can choose the exact times your data sources get refreshed. And of course, with Prep Conductor, you need to have the data management add-on. Um, and the nice thing about this is a little bit more control. Now, I don't know if this is specifically for Tableau Cloud. Um, Streamline, blah, 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 blah. So I think it's Tableau Cloud because in Tableau Server, you wouldn't really have had this issue. So let's go ahead and just do this very quickly. Let's go ahead and select Tableau Cloud and just go back and see if we can find that issue visql data service spell check no so it i think it's just tableau server catching up um here i am sort of thinking hi oh, and this is a massive new thing but no um no it's not it's not um interesting it's just in prep conductor so <laughs> Tableau Prep Conductor. So this must be across the whole board. It must be across the whole board. And maybe there's a specific thing I didn't realize before, which is previously the schedules were preset. Whereas this, whereas this looks like you can define it specifically for a single flow rather than having having it sort of sit, sit, sit on a schedule. So this is a good example of something you have to dig into a little bit more when it launches to understand what's different. And probably what I should do now is go and check what it looks like now and understand what is net new. Uh, this always happens. Um, so really, it's really good to sort of just get the detail of what exactly is new. Okay, local file saving for Tableau Public Desktop Edition. This is huge. What this essentially means is that there's a free version of Tableau Desktop, which doesn't require you to use Tableau Public or publish to Tableau Public or connect to Tableau Public in any way whatsoever. I've already made a video about this. It's already on the channel. Go ahead and check this out. This, this is going to open up opportunities. Let's say you're in an organization. You're trying to prototype whether or not to use Tableau for something. Well, now you can just export a flat file from your system just to prototype this solution. Go get this, build a solution in Tableau, iterate through it a bit more, put it in front of your execs and say, hey, is this useful? And if they say yes, well, you can say, right, in order to productionize this, we're going to need one Tableau desktop license and uh, we've already got a Tableau server, so let's go turn that on. Or if it's something where you don't have any analytic solution, you can start that discussion to get the enterprise capability to share these and govern these and put everything you need around these. But this is going to be an absolute game changer. Now, everyone says, oh, game changer, game changer, game changer. Yes, <laughs> it can be sort of overused a little bit, but from a learning perspective, this is huge. I will make videos going forward now with an assumption that everything I show you can be done in Tableau Desktop Public Edition. This opens up new opportunities for content to things to show you because it just means that we can all use the same data set rather than going to use Superstore all the time. I can now start sharing on GitHub or through a link the exact data source I'm using. You can follow on in the exact version that I'm using. I can actually link to you the version that I'm using. And you can just do the exercise and learn along with me. So again, for learning, for tutorials, for education, it's going to be huge. Just think how many people need to learn about data and just need a tool that they can use to explore data with. Here you go. They have it. It's perfect. So really, really cool. Um, Autosave as part of Tableau Public Desktop Edition is kind of important. If you can save locally, you need to be able to autosave. So you kind of get autosave for free. Um, no sort of big deal there. Spell check on cloud and server. My word. It's funny that this comes on Tableau Cloud and Server, but not on the desktop product. Kind of says something. So Tableau Desktop and uh, Tableau Cloud and Tableau Server are built on different technologies. Inherently, Cloud and Server are web technologies, right? So in web authoring, in those environments, Spellcheck is pretty easy to do because it's just a native part of the browsing experience. So you can kind of bring it in for free with a library. Inside of Tableau Desktop, though, that's not built on web technology. It's going to be slightly tricky. But I wonder if this will come to Tableau Prep because Tableau Prep is essentially a web wrapper. So it'd be really nice to have spell check in those. But nonetheless, really nice to have the very basic feature. Um, nice to have. Tableau Prep right to S3. It does exactly what it says in the tin. You can export 
to S3, um, writing CSV and Parquet files on Amazon S3. Now, I don't know enough about Parquet, but I know that everyone gets super excited about Parquet support and S3 and Tableau. So I will do my due diligence, learn up on Par Parquet, and uh, we'll come back to you on the significance of Parquet versus CS3, okay? Um, CS3, <laughs> S3, CSV, sorry. <laughs> Incremental extracts with subrange refresh. Um, this is pretty cool. I think this says exactly what it says in the tin. So an incremental extract, let's send, let's, blah, blah, blah. an incremental extract essentially allows you to uh, run an extract that doesn't refresh the full data source, but just looks at a key column. It could be date, and when it spots new records based on that date field, it will bring those additional records in. This is good if you're working with a data set where historic records aren't changed, only new records are added, and so it saves you having to refresh the entire thing. And it means you don't get this sort of nasty sort of real buildup of large data sets that are just taking forever to refresh. Instead, incrementally, you can just be adding a thousand rows maybe every hour and it's just staying to, staying afresh. And that hour task takes minutes, whereas refreshing the whole entire database every single time could be taking 10, 20 minutes, taking up database resources and slowing things down. What a subrange refresh seems to suggest is you can... Um, Let's just, let's just read it. Keep data fresh and reduce costs associated with full actual refreshes by setting a date range to refresh for incremental refreshes. So what this kind of suggests is taking that paradigm a little bit further. So you're still using dates. You're still doing a number increment, but you can do it for a range. So maybe you can say, look, go back the last month and get everything that's new as, 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 as a concept, right? Or go back the last year and get everything that's new because you know that everything beyond a year doesn't typically change and you don't actually care about it. So you can create data sets where you can tell people that the data as of the last 30 days is always uh, fresh. Data older than that is stored as a snapshot in my data set. So that's kind of nice because it kind of means you can have the best of both worlds, do what's kind of current and new, but then also have a snapshot in the same data set and then just create a calculation to, to mark the old records as snapshots and the new records as fresh. Nice and easy, really, really cool. Um, Attribute-based access control for content access. So attribute-based access control essentially looks at an attribute coming through from your application and it's able to use that for accessing content. So this means you could essentially dynamically leverage information in your identity provider, let's say Okta, to onboard users and assign the kind of level of access they have. Let's say your uh, um, identity provider says that this person is a manager, you can automatically add them to a manager group and managers all become explorers and therefore they get the explorer role and are assigned access at the point they're logging in automatically. No prior work needed to be done or to request stuff. So that's sort of a really uh, powerful capability. Tableau ID single sign-on. So get a seamless single sign-on across all products and services on the Tableau platform with a Tableau ID. Now, this is new. This is very new. I don't know what a Tableau ID is, but across all products and services on the Tableau platform. Now, this, this could be interesting. This could be the groundwork towards some of the stuff we saw at conference. And this is all speculation. I'm just saying, why would you need a Tableau ID? What's wrong with the Salesforce ID, number one? I know everyone maybe is not a fan of Salesforce, but that would, to me, would be the sort of universal ID. So one ID that's specific to Tableau to use across all the applications, it sounds to me like Tableau is trying to bring all these experiences into one experience. So really, really good to have that. Multiple external IDPs on a site. So get increased user access flexibility with single sign-on from multiple identity providers on a single site. Enable up to 20 identity providers on a site. So really, really cool um, to have this. Previously, you could only have one identity provider on a single site. And so it was kind of difficult to get that to work in some scenarios because companies have slightly different structures uh, in terms of identity providers. Uh, an organization might have different identity providers because they maybe um, have different types of business units. So if I take a delivery company, for example, it might have one identity provider that's suited for you know back office staff and another identity provider for um, staff who are out doing deliveries, as an example. That that sometimes happens for very good reasons. Um, so yeah, this is a this is a nice capability to be able to have. Activity log enhancements. Activity log gives you information about what's going on in Tableau Cloud. And this one, new events record failed and successful login attempts and audits prep flow data external outputs. Admins can interrogate data with SIEM monitoring tools to provide security risk, alerting, and analytics. 
Um, so that's um, that's a nice sort of uh, enhancement, I guess. Resource monitoring enhancements. Uh, get alerted to load disk space and use RMT admin status to determine if database cleanup is needed. An expanded set of tasks are now linked to data query execution. Cool. Service intelligence integration. Service intelligence is a, is a capability within Salesforce. So this sounds like a, an integration into the Tableau ecosystem. So let's read this. Explore data from service intelligence for Salesforce using Tableau with just the click of a button. Click the Explore and Tableau button to connect service intelligence to Tableau Cloud for a deep exploration. So if you've got Tableau Cloud and you've got Salesforce intelligence integration, you just click the button and boom, it opens up a data source. We think we saw this at a demo nearly a year ago, and now it seems to be kind of coming out. So Trailhead integration, um, a free introductory course to Tableau on Trailhead, Salesforce's learning platform. You can now complete guided hands-on learning modules with the real Tableau interface and get instant feedback on visits you build within the course. Oh, that's incredible. Shit, seriously, that is really good. Contextual interface of Tableau inside of Trailhead. That is that is chef's kiss. That is it. That's going to be a huge capability. Profile organization. With a few clicks, Einstein generates categories for public visitors and groups your visitors into these categories, creating an organized profile. So um, that's kind of nice. It sounds like we're getting a lot more enterprise features. Things are sort of getting a little bit more designated to their homes and just feeling it's just getting a sense that things are starting to come together um which is nice which is nice last one recommended visits uh, are you interested in what other tablet public users are creating easily discover content relevant to you simply scroll to the bottom of any given viz page to see personal recommendations for what visitors to check out next so they're essentially using some smarts to see what you might be interested in and they're offering those to you as visualizations so I think that's it. Now, this is not the full list. What you always want to do is go out and check the Tableau release navigator that has the full list of capabilities. There will be sort of small enhancements in there as well that won't be on this list. This is very much the marketing list. This is what they're going to go to town with and tell people is new in this release. But there'll be a ton of small things as well that don't get mentioned. It's happened before. It's going to happen again. So be sure to look out for those. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. As ever, uh, be sure to tune in as I start to make videos for these over the coming weeks. I might start early. I might break my rule and start early because there's a lot here and some of them I don't understand. So we might start making the easy ones early because they're generally available already. And then we'll start to kind of um, break through some of the others as the release comes out. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.